So today we're going to be talking about an application that comes so close to being the best thing I've ever seen that it just makes me both very happy and disappointed because this application that we're going to talk about today is just so close to being really, really awesome, but kind of falls just a tad short. But that doesn't make it's not, you know, less awesome. It's still awesome. It's just not as awesome as it could be. So uh, what a lead up to a video, right? So today we're going to be taking a look at Box Buddy. Now I am a certified DistroBox fanatic. I've talked about DistroBox in approximately 10 videos, probably. I've talked about DistroBox a lot. I've switched from Flatpak to DistroBox for the vet, for the vast majority of my, con you know, containerized applications. And I really, really like DistroBox. I've typed, I've hyped it up a lot. But one of the biggest complaints that I get when it comes to DistroBox is that it's a terminal focused application. And by that, really what I mean is it's a terminal only application. If you want to create a DistroBox, you do so in the terminal. If you want to launch a DistroBox, you do so in the terminal. If you want to export a application from a DistroBox to your host system, you do so in the terminal. If you don't like to use the command line to do things, DistroBox is very inaccessible for you and always, always has been. But today we're going to be taking a look at an application called BoxBuddy. Now BoxBuddy is a GUI front end for DistroBox. So you can imagine how like how I'm really excited because this is freaking awesome. This is remo removes the complaint that a lot of people have that aren't comfortable in the command line towards actually using DistroBox. Unfortunately, it's not quite there, but it's a really good start. So let's take a look at BoxBuddy and let's see what it's all about. So this right here is BoxBuddy. Now out of the box, unless you have DistroBoxes available to you already created, this will look a little bit differently. So what it will say is that there are no DistroBoxes available. Would you like to create one? It will tell you to hit the plus icon up here at the top. Then you would be able to create a DistroBox. Now, Unfortunately, we come right away to the first thing that is not working in this application. And it's a big one. It's actually creating a distro box. This right here comes up just fine. You can name it. So let's name this Debian. And then if we go down and actually search Debian, you'll find Debian in the list of distro box images that are available. Now, if this were to work the way that I think it's supposed to work, this would be freaking awesome, right? Because one of the things that is really hard is to find all the images that are available. Yes, the DistroBox documentation has some, but it's not always updated. So like, for example, the last time I checked, Debian 12 was not on the list, even though that image has existed for quite some time. So relying on the documentation to tell you what images are available is not always the best thing. So the fact that there's just a drop down of all the images that DistroBox supports, or at least the vast majority of them, is really cool. So I'm gonna scroll down here. I'm gonna find the Debian option. So right now there's a Debian 12 here somewhere right here. I'll just click that and then I'll hit create. And then nothing. Uh, this, is the, this is the most disappointing part of this entire application is that as far as I can tell, this does nothing. It doesn't doesn't actually work. I, uh, what the hell do I know? You know what? That's seriously just total BS. I've tried this thing for an hour, and now all of a sudden you're gonna work. Thanks a lot. Just make me look like a fool. Why don't you? So, uh, remember what I said there at the beginning, where this was a gigantic disappointment. I take all that back. You guys get to see how the sausage is made right there. Oh, good lord. <laughs> I, I should start over, but you guys are gonna get to see it. So, uh, yeah, it works. What the hell do I know? I did, in fact, try that many times, and it just sat there and spun and spun and spun. Now, it's possible, because th this one that's actually already here, this Arch one, I went and created that in the terminal. So it's possible that when there are no distro boxes on the system, it won't work. Maybe that's the maybe that's the question or the problem. I don't know. Or maybe I was just doing something completely wrong. Maybe I chose the wrong image and it was just taking forever for that reason. But I don't know. But I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, create a new user here. That's also not something that you usually do in a... You must choose a longer password. You know what? My password is very long and secure. It's better than DTs. I'll fight anyone who, who tries to tell me otherwise. So, Box Buddy actually does work. So, we might as well talk about it. So you can create your own distro boxes right from the GUI, which is really awesome. So if we wanted to get out of this, I think we could just hit exit like so, and it would exit it, right? Now, 
you can see a list of all your D distro boxes right here in the, the GUI. And the things that you can do with them are pretty neat. So if you want to update your box, you can do so. You can just go ahead and hit this button here. It will perform an update. If there are updates, it will do the updates. And if there's not updates, there's it won't go through. That time, there's error. Now, uh, that's one of the criticisms I have. I'll talk about that in a minute. But And that's actually a criticism that I know is actually there That instead of the criticism that it apparently was nonsensical. You can also view all the applications that are available on the distro box right from a graphical list and you can either run them or add them to your host machine by hitting add to menu. So let's just say you wanted to install Vivaldi in a Arch distro box. You install it on Arch, come back here to the graphical menu and then you can just hit add to menu and it will then show up inside of your host machine's application menu. That's really awesome. Now, you still have to go to the terminal to install the stuff. So it doesn't solve all the problems, which we'll talk more about here in a minute, but that's still a thing that you'll have to do. Another thing you can do from here is delete the box. So those are the four things that you can do. You can create new ones, you can delete the ones that you've had, you can open them up in a terminal, you can upgrade them, and you can view the applications that are installed inside the box. Those are the five things that you can do. There are no settings, okay? So you don't have to worry about any settings. And that's it. The fact that you can create them manage them all from here in a GUI interface is just spectacular. And the fact that I was wrong about the adding being broken is also better than anything that I've seen all day. The fact that it works is just chef kissed. It's so good. So let's go ahead then and talk about a couple of the negative things that I, I experienced while using this, just, just to put them out there. So the first one is that this is not going to keep you from having to use the command line. As much as I hype this up as a GUI front end for DistroBox, really what this is, is a GUI manager for DistroBox. You can manage your DistroBoxes here. You're not going to get out of using the command line to do things inside of DistroBox. You still have to use the terminal to do all of that stuff. So if you want to install an application, like, a, ex, like the example I used earlier, if you wanted to install Vivaldi or Chromium or whatever, uh, inside of your distro box, you'd still have to open up a terminal, enter the distro box, or use this button here to actually, you know, get into the distro box. It'd take you here. You can, you know, sudo like so, and we would install that. And then that's, you'd still have to do that here in the terminal. So if you're not familiar with the command line, BuddyBox is still not going to be the 100% solution towards distro box. You, there's no GUI front end for everything, unfortunately. There's still going to be a lot of terminal slash command line use, right? That's, there's just no getting around that. So that's the biggest negative if you're looking for a 100% GUI solution. So the second one is actually a little bit more of a bug. If you go to upgrade your distro box and you hit this button and there's an error, if you watch closely, you'll see that there's an error there at the end. It gets to a certain point, it says there's an error and then it closes the terminal, okay? That means when there's an error, you can actually see what the error is. That's kind of a, a problem. So if, if your your upgrade errors out for some reason, like it often does in Arch when you haven't updated the key ring in a lot, little while or at all, <laughs> because that's what Arch does, because of course it does. You know, just to let you know, you don't have to do that on OpenSUSE. Just, just saying that out loud. But anyways, if you have an error during the upgrade process, it closes the terminal immediately. You can't see the error. So that's a problem it should have some permanence there to show you that there was an error, not just go away. So that's a bug. So those are the two real quote unquote negative things that I had to say about BuddyBox. Other than that, the, it's really freaking awesome. So especially with creation and, and maintenance of your distro box, it's really, really good. So if you don't want to manage your distro boxes from the terminal, you no longer have to. They're all going to be right here inside of GUI. And that's so cool. It's a very good beginning. So way back at the beginning, when I talked about that feature being broken, I was kind of upset because it was one of the real big features that I was going to kind of tout because a lot of, you know, creating, when you create a distro box in the terminal, you have to enter a, a command that looks like this. And that's not great. You have to find the URL and you have to name it like this. It's not great, right? So the fact that you can go up here to the plus and find all of the images you want right here in a list for you, that right there is worth anything anywhere because that's just so good. It gives you all of the images right here that you want. I, I would like kind of a search box instead of a scroll thing so I can just type in the 
thing and it just kind of auto fills it or whatever. So I don't have to, if, if I wanted to use void in my disher box, first of all, I didn't even know void was an option, but apparently it is. I shouldn't have to scroll all the way down to get to void. If I could just type in void, that'd be awesome. But that's nitpicking. The fact that that exists and I can just scroll down to the image, the image that I want to use and name it and create it, that's spectacular. So my second favorite feature actually is if I were to install something from one of my distro boxes, I can open up the view applications portion of BuddyBox and actually add it to the menu like I showed you earlier. I don't have to remember the flag or whatever it is to use distrobox export It's just dash dash app, but I don't have to remember it anymore. It's just, I can come here, add it to the menu, and it's there. That's awesome especially if you have a, a distro box that has a ton of applications that you've installed in it you can just come here and add them to the menu now i would like to see some things improve just a little bit so first when i have this added to the menu i would like to be able to remove it from the menu from here apparently you can't do that that's a little disappointing another thing that i would like to have seen is to actually be able to uninstall the application right from here That'd be awesome. Now, that could, I could see that being a little tricky, seeing as how that's not DistroBox dependent. That's more dependent on the distro. So you'd have to know what distro it came from, you know, and then uninstall it using that package manager. So I can see how that could be messy. But for sure, they could do the opposite of the DistroBox export. They could just do the dash dash delete flag and allow you to remove that particular application, which they don't apparently allow you to do right now. So you would have to go and do that on your own inside of the terminal, which is just kind of a downside. So th those are really the, my two favorite features of this whole thing. Uh, they're not perfect. Uh, the slowness that I experienced or expected to experience but didn't happen on camera was one thing. Uh, but the uh, ability to actually manage the applications you have exported would be really, really nice, but it, that's not quite there yet. So overall, BuddyBox is a fantastic application. Is it everything that you want it to be in terms of a GUI? Probably not. There are still a few things that I think that they could add in terms of managing your distro boxes, and I think that they will. They're still developing. They're, the last commit or the last release was like two days ago, so they're still pushing stuff out. The, it, from what I've seen, they're also the developers are very responsive to issues and stuff like that because they have no outstanding issues, and that's just kind of unheard of for any application. So that's really nice. So. I think that this is a, a very good start when it comes to managing your distro boxes. Now, like I said, it's not going to solve the entire problem if you consider it a problem because the vast majority of your work inside of distro box is still going to happen in the command line. That's just the nature of distro box. Unfortunately, I don't think that there is a solution for that outside of like installing like a, a graphical desktop environment or something like that where you could then manage everything graphically. I don't know. But if you were searching for a solution on how to manage your distro boxes and you wanted a GUI solution for that, BuddyBox is fantastic. It's really, really good, and I'm happy that I discovered it. So I will leave a link to the GitHub page down below. It's available on FlatHub if you want to install it from FlatHub. You can also build it from source as a flat pack as well. So that's it for this video. If you have thoughts on BuddyBox, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can also head on over to the shop where you'll find desk mats and hoodies and t-shirts and all sorts of stuff. All the proceeds from that go directly to support the channel and allow me to make more Linux content and be awesome in general. So head on over there to shop.thelinuxcast.org. Check out all the merch. You won't be sorry that you did. Thanks, everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube and Kofi. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very much for your support. I truly, again, you're so appreciated. Just gigantic, big hugs all the time, if that wasn't so creepy. But anyways, thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.